Hi everyone, I'm Ryoko, and I just moved into a dormitory for animators. In this video, I want to show you the typical everyday life of a rookie animator, such as myself, and what it's like to live in an animator dormitory. In my last video, I introduced myself and gave a rough explanation of the dorm. In this video, I want to talk with you about what my first year as an animator was like, what I worked on, and what kind of environment I typically worked in. I don't want to give you too much information all at once, so I'll break up my stories about my first year by month, starting with April. I think many of you are also curious about things such as the salary of an animator and what a lifestyle of an animator is like, so I'll be sure to include that info in my stories as well. I hope you like this video! I joined an anime studio in April 2019. Obviously, it was my first time hired as an animator, so I still remember how excited I was. This production company created Gankutsuo and Bokurano, but my favorite anime that they produced is Basilisk. New animators typically train for a period of about three months. Of course, each anime studio has their own training style process, so the training period can slightly vary, but it's relatively similar as far as I know. First, we learn how to draw in between animation. After that, we learn how to clean up rough sketch lines of key animations and how to make them ready to be broadcasted. This work in process is known as tracing. Animation production is divided into several processes, such as drawing layouts, key animation, and in between animation. If you want to know more details about these processes, please check out our upcoming video where Mr. Sugawara explains the workflow of production. After the training for in-between animation processes and how to meet certain standards is complete, animators can finally do some real in-between animation work. But in my case, the training process was a bit different due to the situation of my first anime studio. There was no one in charge of checking the animators in between animation quality, therefore the training system wasn't well established. An episode director tried to train me on in between animation by showing me previous document files from previous trainees. Given the situation of our company and due to our lack of staff, it was really tough to receive legitimate training. Because I wasn't able to get proper training, I mostly practiced on my own, which caused me to feel really stressed and frustrated, leaving me to wonder how I got in this difficult situation in the first place. I kept questioning myself and wondering if I was wasting my time trying to become an animator. This is when I realized that disorganized companies also exist. Of course, there are many studios that have proper training systems. I guess I was a bit unlucky. Because of this situation, I often felt like I wasn't good enough at drawing in-betweens. I had a difficult time reaching the typical standards of drawing clean lines. My start in this field was filled with struggles and doubts about my abilities as an animator. I know that I still should have believed in myself, but back then, I just couldn't. For those who want to work in an animation studio, it's really important to know which ones have proper training systems but we can't really know the situation of each studio until we actually join them, which makes it really tough for animators to choose sometimes. But my time at this anime studio wasn't all bad all the time. I actually had some good times too. My senpais, aka senior coworkers, were very nice and even let me join them on a museum tour and ohanami, aka cherry blossom viewing in April. I got the chance to talk to the senior co-workers who I admired about their favorite anime series. They also told me about some of their own animation projects as well. April, my first month as an animator, was also the month in which I was reminded that I needed to improve my skills as an animator and that I was finally on the starting line of becoming a professional animator. This is what my first year as an animator was like. Oh. Also, my salary at this time was about $500 per month. 
During the training period, we literally just train, so we can't actually work. Depending on the company, the salary during training periods differ, but in my case, I earned about $500 a month. Some companies only give new animators zero to $300 a month, so I think I was lucky. Because I lived in an animator dormitory, I only needed about $150 per month for rent and most living expenses besides transportation. But for most new animators who just moved to Tokyo and live by themselves, it would cost about $600 for an apartment, $100 for utilities, $100 for Wi Fi. So in general, they would need about $800 per month in order to survive. So it must have been really tough for other animators if they did not have any other help. That's all for this video. I can't wait to tell you about my experiences in May. I want to post videos which will hopefully make others more interested in anime and those who create them, the animators. I really hope you like my videos. If you have any questions about Japanese animators or about this dorm, please leave them below. I would love to read your comments. Thanks again for watching! This dorm is operated thanks to the help of donations from our supporters. If you are interested in more information about our crowdfunding program, please check out the link in the description below.